Hi everybody, um, I thought I'd record a quick video for you um, to give you some help with this statement of changes in equity um, question, Matthews Limited. Yeah. Um, right, so statement of change in equity then. The idea is that we start with previous year's figures. So this is an extract from the statement of financial position, a little section at the bottom for um, equity. And they've given us the figures for last year, that's last year, this is 2018, and for this current year, so 2019. And the idea of the statement of changes in equity is that we explain for each of these categories why the total has changed. So all we're doing really is twisting that round. So instead of doing that um, vertically, it's going horizontally. So we're setting up a column for each one of those. So you can see they're ordinary shares, ordinary shares share premium, share premium, revaluation, revaluation, retained earnings, retained earnings. Um, so what we're going to do is start with the opening balance. So that's going to be at 1st of January 2019. It's the first day of the financial year. And you'll note here that all these figures have been abbreviated to the nearest £1,000. So by putting a pound sign and three zeros at the top, we can then avoid having to write all the zeros in. But one really important bit is that when we look at the additional information, which is down at the bottom, let's write that up, for the additional information, that is all given to you with the zeros in. So whenever you work out a total or you're given a total, like this 368,000, it's really important that we take the zeros off and put it up into the statement of changes in it. So let's just start with the opening balances now. On the 1st of January, 2019, we had 2 million in the ordinary shares. Remember, that's just the nominal value. Any extra that the shares have been sold for goes into the share premium account. So we had 875,000 share premium account so that means that they've sold two million one pound ordinary shares um, but they've sold them at a premium or some at least some of those shares have been sold at a premium and that's why we've got 875,000 in the share premium account we've also got a revaluation reserve 350,000 so i'm just transferring that down and the retained earnings remember retained earnings of profits that haven't yet been paid out to shareholders as dividends. So these are profits that have been earned from normal trading activities that haven't been swallowed up um, in tax and in dividends. So they've been carried forward um, to this current financial year. So we should just check that those four figures add up to the three six. I'm going to assume I put those correctly that, that will work. What we've got to do now, and what I recommend you do actually, is just put the closing balances in. So at the 31st of December, 2019, we want to end up with two and a half million in ordinary shares. So that means that we've obviously sold um, some shares during the year. We want to end up with a million in the share premium account. Um, we want to end up with 450,000 in the revaluation reserve. So revaluation reserve is what arises when the value of our non-current assets increases. Um, and then we've got retained earnings. We've gone from 438,000 last year to 706,000. So overall, the equity or the value of this particular company has increased from 3,663,000 at the start of the financial year to a total of 4,656,000 at the end of the financial year. Okay. So what we're going to do in this gap between these figures, what we should do, if I had a ruler, I could do a nice neat line, but I haven't, so I'm just going to rule that off um, as a total. Um, we're going to look at this additional information, which is going to help us to explain what's gone on during the year. So ordinary shares, on the um, additional information number one, ordinary shares, 500,000 in number, one pound ordinary shares, been issued at a premium of 25p. Well, if the premium is 25p, we need to add that to the one pound nominal value to get the total issue price 25. so that means they've actually been sold for one pound 25 each okay so issue of shares needs to go in here now we can't just bond one pound 25 times five hundred thousand in the ordinary share capital because remember this can never be more than one pound nominal value so the figure that's going to go in here is 500,000 times a pound. 500, because remember, we're abbreviating it to the nearest thousand. 
Now, we've sold them at a premium. Everyone's paid £1.25 for them. So the extra 25 pence times 500,000, which I reckon is 125,000, is going to go in the share premium account. Okay? So the total of 625,000 comes across into that total column. So that explains why ordinary share capital has gone up from 2 million to 2.5 million. If we were to consider the double entry here, we've received a total of £625,000. That will be debited to the bank account, and then £500,000 will be credited to the shares and £125,000 to the share. Next one that we can think about here is that the profit after tax for the year ended 31st of December was £368,000. So we're going to add profit for the year. And it needs to be the after-tax figure. If you're given profit before tax, you need to deduct the tax before you write it in here. We don't want to see any tax. This needs to be the final profit for the year that's retained after the tax. So because we're knocking off those three zeros, remember, we're just going to put 368 to retained earnings. We've paid a dividend of 5p. So dividends paid needs to go in. We need to put that in in one total. We've only got one dividend that's been paid in this example. If we had, for example, an interim dividend and a final dividend, we need to put them both in together. Um, so it says we've got a dividend of 5p per share. Remember to convert that 5p into pounds, so 0.05 pounds per share. And then we need to think about how many shares were in existence at the start of the year, because the shares issued during the year did not qualify for the dividend. So we're going back to this 2 million shares that we had at the start. Um, so 2 million times 5p is actually 100,000 pounds. Remember, again, we're taking the zero off. The dividend's paid, we want to put some brackets around that because it's an outflow um, of 100,000 pounds. Okay, so that's number three dealt with. Number four, we've got a revaluation of assets. So remember the double entry when we revalue assets is to debit the assets, so debit non-current assets with 100,000 and credit the revaluation. So we're only interested in this second half here, the revaluation reserve part. That 100,000 pounds is going to go in there, okay? And before we finish, what we need to make sure is that all of these add up. So 2 million plus 500,000, that is correct. 875 plus 125, yep, that equals 1,000, which is actually a million because of the three zeros. Revaluation reserve, 350 brought forward, 100 added on. Let me just check that 438 brought forward on retained earnings plus 368 minus 100 actually equals 706. Yes, it does. And then we probably should, just for good measure, check that 3663 plus 625 plus 368 minus 100 plus 100, which equals 3656. And we should know that those figures are correct. It's there. So that's it. Doesn't it look easy? Now it's your turn. Over to you.